All right, stop me if you've heard this one. A clumsy Gungan military officer wanders into a beloved movie franchise, walks up to the fandom, and says, Misa Jaja -Ja Binks! 15 years pass, and the fandom goes, here's a fan theory, you're a Sith master. <laughs> This episode of Idea Channel is brought to you by Squarespace. Allow me to introduce you to Jar Jar Binks, a central character in episode one of the prequel trilogy of Star Wars films. Jar Jar is a Gungan, former exile and supposed ally to Obi-Wan Kenobi, Queen Amidala, Qui-Gon Jinn, Jedis, and the Galactic Republic as a whole. In his time on screen, we watch Jar Jar rise in the ranks from outcast to galactic senator, where he holds a seat of significant power, all of which would make perfect sense if Jar Jar wasn't so... Well, I'll let Jar Jar speak for himself. Misa called Jar Jar Binks. Misa, your humble servant. That won't be necessary. Oh, but it is. It is impossible to take this guy seriously. And so fans are led to ask how and why anyone, anywhere in any possible world, would. How has he charted the path he has? How has he not only survived, but excelled to eventually be manipulated by the Chancellor to the detriment to the very world and galaxy he's supposed to serve, becoming largely responsible for the dissolution of galactic democracy, but still... How did he even get that far? Well, luckily... The long and short of this fan theory is that Jar Jar is, in fact, a highly skilled Force user and Sith collaborator. Counter to his harmless appearance, it is claimed that Jar Jar is actually conspiring with well-known jackboot-wearing dark fathers like Darth Vader, Chancellor Palpatine, slash Darth Sidious, and maybe even Darth Maul, which, I mean, aside who names these guys? Were we one step away from calling Kylo Ren Kylo Dastardly before J.J. Abrams was like, it's a little on the nose, don't you think? Anyway, the defense for the theory that Jar Jar is in moody cahoots with all of the aging goths of the dark side is elaborate. The theory originated in a novella-length Reddit post and launched a thousand and one YouTube videos. So if you want the whole story, we'll put links all around. The Reader's Digest version of the Darth Jar Jar thesis is the following. One, every success we attribute to Jar Jar's dumb luck is actually calculated. As theory author Reddit user Lumpawaru says, Obi-Wan says, there is no such thing as luck. Two, some details can be interpreted as evidence that Jar Jar isn't a bumbling idiot, but a physical genius. His clumsiness is a result of the drunken fist style, purposeful awkwardness which confuses opponents. What looks like success by chance is actually the result of skill. Three, the level of physical skill, seeming and otherwise, that Jar Jar displays is held only by Force users in the Star Wars universe. Other details reveal Jar Jar's political successes could be the result of Force manipulation. He moves his hands, as Force users do when they are being suggestive. So not only is he a physical genius, but a trained Force user. And finally, four, accepting Binks knows what he's doing physically and politically while employing the Force means that he was not a pawn in the Chancellor's plot to turn the Republic into the Empire, but a willing participant. Binks is a deciding factor in the then-Galactic Senate's decision to grant the Chancellor power to do evil stuff, ergo, they must be bros. Dark side bros. Proponents of the Darth Jar Jar theory have even gone so far as to suggest the gangly Gungan could be the antagonistic supreme leader Snoke, head of the First Order, whose name sounds less obviously evil to me and more like a type of vegetable. So there's been no shortage of conversation concerning the plausibility of this theory and all of its descendant theory. So I want to focus on something else, on how Lumpawaru implies something about how the audience's relationship to Jar Jar plays into all of this. Because until until this theory gained traction at the end of last year, to put it bluntly, Jar Jar was a joke, an embarrassment almost, one in a long string of cringeworthy decisions related to the prequel trilogy. Lumpawaru wagers that George Lucas actually intended a reveal in episode two, that Jar Jar is a significant antagonist, that he would battle Yoda, who actually ends up battling Count Dooku, a character Lumpawaru conjectures was hastily written to replace Jar Jar when the collective bile for Binks began to bubble. Effectively, what this fan theory does is recast Jar Jar in this theory theoretically original, insidious role, to make his clumsiness and dumb luck not something we as audience members have to sit through, have to deal with, but something deeper and more meaningful, thus making his character so as well. This theory is an apologia of Binks. 
If I had to bet, I would guess Lucas didn't intend Jar Jar as a Yoda foil, but a combination R2-D2, C-3PO alike. A kid-friendly character who contributes to the plot, but who isn't much more than a bit player. Binks' character gets confused by bad writing and a desire for novelty. What if this type of character was also influential and the whole thing goes south? But that explanation is boring. What's interesting is that since Jar Jar sits between several tropes, it's possible to read him as bumbling mistake, scheming manipulator, or most excitingly, both. The Darth Jar Jar both interpretation is exciting because it justifies Jar Jar. It's kind of intended to save Star Wars from itself, which you only see occasionally from fan theories, most notably perhaps Norm Macdonald and Emily Nussbaum's related takes on the Breaking Bad finale. Each holds that the convenience and drama of that final episode is flat, unbelievable, or both. And for a show with such a command over tone and storytelling, it only makes sense if Walter is in fact dreaming it, all while he's actually dying in the seat of a snow-covered car surrounded by police. The finale, then, is not an unclever episode of Breaking Bad, but the hastily imagined coulda bens of a doomed man. These theories are significant because it's not generally with fan theories that fans try to address the shortcomings of their favorite stories, but in fan fiction. In several of our fan theory videos, there's been a lot of talk about the relationship between fan theories and fan fiction, where the line between them is, how their value propositions compare, and how each have a related but different bad rap. To me, fan theories attempt to rearrange existing story pieces in a way that canon works still function as themselves, only more complexly. Fan fiction on its face has no such restrictions. Peggy Carter can hang out with the Winchester brothers at Hogwarts, where a female Commander Riker teaches Teen Captain America how to pilot the Millennium Falcon except its onboard AI is Cortana, or what's much more likely, situations, plots, characters, and settings can be rewritten or recombined to have more meaning or impact on an audience that feels either underserved or less than respected by the canon media itself. Often fans address issues of representation or sensitivity, what they feel is lacking in interpersonal connection, romance, or even acrimony between characters. Fan fiction allows fans to do with their beloved characters and situations what they think can and maybe should be done, but isn't, won't, or can't be for all kinds of reasons. Darth Jar Jar, I think, sits on the edge of fan theory and fan fiction. It is highly, highly coherent. If you were to write it out as a piece of fiction, it would resemble the work upon which it is based nearly identically. In my mind, it would be the difference between Blade Runner's director's cut and its theatrical release, which includes ponderous voiceover. I don't know why he saved my life. Maybe in those last moments he loved life more than he ever had before. By the percentage of new material generated test, Darth Jar Jar resembles a fan theory. You know, I find that Jar Jar creature to be a little odd. But within it, that redemptive streak, that implied desire to save Jar Jar from ruin, sure, from the spate of vitriolic public opinion which led his voice actor Ahmed Best to call his post-menace experience a painful one, but also to save the Star Wars prequel trilogy from at least one of its many blunders. The inclusion of Jar Jar Binks, perhaps even two blunders if we believe a lapsed commitment to his original characterization. This strikes me as fan fiction-like in a way most fan theories are not. To rewrite the story not because, or not just because it makes it more interesting or complicated or gives its elements additional meaning, but to make it more enjoyable, more usable and approachable to the groups of fans who felt like they were wronged or disrespected by canon choices. It is a rare fan theory that's made because something is bad. Maybe because it's just not worth the effort. What's the payback for developing a textual explanation for, say, the horridness of the second two Matrix films, or every other Star Trek film? Not that there isn't any, but that there's an imbalance related to the amount of effort required for such complex fan apologia. A bad movie or a flat TV episode is like a half-played Jenga game. Where fan fiction knocks the whole thing over and rebuilds it with the same pieces, fan theory apologia is like reinserting those pieces while it's still standing to try to make it stable again, except some of the pieces are probably missing. Collectively, we've decided that this is a worthy pursuit for Jar Jar and the entire prequel trilogy. This is a cultural artifact that we have spent 15 years trying to fix, save, explain, vindicate. Fan re-edits, Topher Grace's Star Wars, correct watching orders, Machete Order King amongst them, and now Darth Jar Jar, an unending process seeking to make Star Wars 
great again. Which was maybe hastened along by the release of The Force Awakens. But still, the prequel trilogy is a set of works asking to be put back together for a million reasons, which I'll let y'all tackle in the comments, but let's at least for a moment appreciate that a piece of great seeming structural importance is one thought at first to be responsible for the collapse. We have nothing of value, that's our problem. What do you guys think? Three questions. One, is Jar Jar a Sith collaborator? Two, what other redemptive fan theories are there? And three, why do you think there has been so much work and effort invested into figuring out how to enjoy the Star Wars prequel trilogy? Let us know in the comments and I will respond to some of them in next week's comment response video. In this week's comment response video, we talk about your thoughts regarding aesthetic. If you wanna watch that one, you can click here or find a link in the doobly-doo. We have a Facebook and IRC and a subreddit, links in the doobly-doo, and the tweet of the week comes from Chop Logic, who characterizes internet irony as earnestness wearing deal with it shades, which I love. And hey, in case you were wondering, this episode of Idea Channel is sponsored by Squarespace. If there's an idea or project that you're itching to show the world, you should. Squarespace provides tools that help people showcase their passions with a customizable landing page, website, or online store. They also offer domains, hosting, and customer support. Start your trial today. Visit squarespace.com forward slash idea channel. And last but certainly not least, this episode would not have been possible or good without the very hard work of these bumbling Gungans. See you next week.